Bonjour, I'm Pierre from French Moments and in this video I will guide you on a walking tour of Fontaine de Vaucluse in Provence. We'll follow the course of the River Sorgue to its source, visit the heart of the village and then climb up to the castle of the bishops of Cavaillon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It really supports the channel and helps us bring more amazing content to you. Also, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest videos. To kick off our tour, here's the fountain statue depicting Saint Véran slaying the Coulobre, the legendary dragon of Vaucluse. We'll delve into this legend later as we continue our tour of Fontaine de Vaucluse. Now let's take a look at the village church. This church is among the oldest in Provence, showcasing the Romanesque style of the 11th century. It houses Carolingian frieze fragments dating back to the 7th century and the sarcophagus of Saint Véran. The church was built on the site of an ancient sanctuary dedicated to a pagan water god. Indeed, traces of the ancient temple can be found inside. A striking Roman column adorns the south side of the choir. Now let's head to the heart of the village, the Place de la Colonne. Fontaine de Vaucluse is quite small, so touring the village doesn't take long. That's why we'll venture beyond the village centre to explore the surroundings. Here's the charming Place de la Colonne, beautifully shaded by magnificent plane trees. We'll take a stroll around it. You might hear some background noise captured by my camera. That's the sound of the Sorg River. You'll need to get used to this sound as we'll stay close to the water for much of our discovery. This is the pink facade of the town hall. Although Fontaine de Vaucluse is not a town, it bears the inscription Hôtel de Ville or Town Hall. Indeed, the commune has fewer than 600 permanent residents. The letters RF stand for République Française or French Republic. So, why is this square named Place de la Colonne? Well, it's because of the colonne that rises in the roundabout center. The colonne was erected in 1804 to commemorate the 500th anniversary of Petrarch's birth. I'll have a chance to tell you more about Petrarch later in our tour. The monument was initially placed near the source of the Sorg River. It remained there for 25 years before being moved to the village square. What I love about this square are the large plane trees that provide shade during the hot summer days. You have to look up to admire the foliage. Let's now head to the riverbank. Having mentioned it so much, I'm sure that I've piqued your curiosity. And here's the Sorg River. Look at these colors. They are particularly vivid under the sunlight. It's an aquatic plant, the lesser water parsnip, that gives the water its magnificent emerald green color. Let's walk along the bridge. and move closer to the water wheel. The Sorg has been used for its hydraulic energy and power since the early 16th century. The natural energy of the Sorg's flowing waters was once the driving force behind the establishment of numerous industrial activities. At one point, there were up to seven paper mills in the village. Since then, many factories have been destroyed and the buildings have either disappeared or been repurposed. The last paper mill closed its door in 1968 and the village's prosperity has since relied on tourism and crafts.
This water wheel is one of the two water wheels that can be seen in the village. We'll pass by its second one later. We'll retrace our steps back to the village square. And on the left is the tourist office where you can get a map of the village and other tourist information. Here's the downstream of the Sorg and its locks. You might notice that the village isn't very crowded. If you come in the summer or on sunny weekends, expect a large crowd of visitors. To film this video, I visited Fontaine de Vaucluse at the end of October, early in the morning. This explains why the trees are starting to take on beautiful autumn colors. And if you visit in the summer, more flowers will add to the site's charm. Parking in the village is limited. Despite the low tourist turnout, I had to park my car in the Livernier car park, 300 meters from the center. There is a charge for all car parks and I advise parking your car as soon as you find a spot. Now we will follow the Chemin de la Fontaine to discover the famous source of the Sorg River. The source isn't far, situated at the end of a shaded path 800 meters away. The first part of the path is lined with shops on one side and the river on the other. It's an easy, accessible walk for everyone, with only the last few meters being pebbly. I'll be pressing on, but feel free to use the benches for a break under the plane trees. To the right is the entrance to the Ecomusée du Gouffre. It hosts the underground world of Norbert Casteret. This museum includes a display of speleology equipment, reconstructions of various speleological sites, and an impressive collection of crystallizations collected by Norbert Casteret, one of the pioneers of modern speleology. If you're watching this on YouTube and you've been to this part of Provence, I'd love to hear about your experiences in Fontaine de Vaucluse. Drop a comment below and tell us what you loved about it.
Here's the castle of the Cavaillon bishops perched on a rocky spur above Fontaine de Vaucluse. I'll take you to visit it later in this guided walk. And here's the second water wheel of the village, which I mentioned earlier. It's the Moulin du Papier, or paper mill, that still manufactures paper today using traditional techniques from the 16th century. The paper mill is open for tours and you'll learn all about the paper making process. The Sorgue is a short river of 30 kilometers entirely contained within the Vaucluse department. It splits into several branches upstream of l'île sur la Sorgue, one of which passes through the city of Avignon and the surrounding countryside before flowing into the Rhône. The name of the commune comes from the Latin Vallis Closa, meaning the enclosed valley. In provincial dialect, it's called Vaucluza or Vaucluso. This gave its name to the Vaucluse département when it was created in 1793. Until 1946, the commune was called Vaucluse. That year, it officially changed its name to Fontaine de Vaucluse to avoid confusion with the department's name. We'll join the riverbank to contemplate the colors of the Sorg. It's a spot I'm particularly fond of, especially early in the morning when there is no one around. As we walk the last meters before reaching the source, let's talk about the famous legend of Saint Véran and the Coulobre. The legend says that in the 6th century, Saint Véran settled as a hermit in this remote valley. The source was the lair of a terrifying dragon, the Coulobre. Saint Véran chased the dragon away, which fled to the Alps near the village of Saint Véran. This miracle, which saved the valley's inhabitants, made Saint Véran famous and he agreed to become the Bishop of Cavaillon. It's interesting to note that other similar legends exist in France, such as the Graouli defeated by Saint Clément in Metz or the Gargouille slain by Saint Romain in Rouen.
We are approaching the source. I hadn't planned on visiting Fontaine de Vaucluse this week, but after a few days of rain, I thought that perhaps it would raise the water level. Because every time I've come here, I've never seen the source full of water. In fact, I always came at the wrong time. Normally, you should visit in winter or early spring after heavy rainfall. So, suspense. Here's the source. Well, it's dry. I shouldn't be surprised because the water level depends on the weather, rainfall or even snow melt of the past year. But it doesn't matter because the natural side is still impressive. But today I didn't want to leave without discovering where the river's water comes from if it's not coming from the dry source. To be sure, let's go down this path to the riverbank. As I said, this source is fed by rainwater infiltrations from the higher terrain layers from Mont Ventoux to the Montagne de Lure and the Mont de Vaucluse. These waters gather at a low point to form a very abundant source. In hydrology, this type of source is called a Vauclusian spring. The Fontaine de Vaucluse is the largest Vauclusian spring in France and one of the five largest in the world. The depth of the cave system remains a mystery. In 1989, the remote-controlled mini-submarine Le Spelenaut reached its deepest point at 350 meters. So, here's the river. Let's now see where the water comes from. There, I found it. The water has made its way from the underground corridor of the source to spill out here. At least I've seen the source of the salt in autumn. Here we are 200 meters further on. It's incredible to see how wide the river is here, yet so close to the source. Here we are back in the village center on the Place de la Colonne. For our next visit, I invite you to follow me to a charming and secret place in Fontaine de Vaucluse. These are the Garden of Petrarch. To find it, first we must cross the Sauk River. Now we are on Avenue François Petrarch, which is on the road leading to Gordes. We will take this tunnel that transports us into the world of Petrarch. This is the Passage Aqua Petrarca, the name of the Italian village where Petrarch died in 1374. From 1339, Fontaine de Vaucluse was the favorite residence of Petrarch. Here is the Petrarch Museum, located on the site of his house, or at least of his garden. Francesco Petrarch is among the first great authors of Italian literature. Petrarch is remembered for the perfection of his poetry, which versifies his love for Laura du Sade. It is here that the eternal lover of Laura regularly came to listen to the hoarse voice of the waters. The poet explained that this was his favorite residence, Here's what he wrote. The very illustrious source of the Sorg, long famous in itself, has become even more celebrated by my long stay and my songs. In 
In Fontaine de Vaucluse, his servant Raymond Monet taught him the art of fishing for trouts, cultivating his garden and hunting game. The poet left the village for good in March 1353. He donated his house to the sons of his servant, who had just died, to offer hospitality to his friends visiting the place. On Christmas Day of that year, a band of looters entered the village and pillaged and burnt it. Petrarch's house was burnt down. The remote valley fell into oblivion after this attack and Petrarch's departure. Considered a wild place, it was little frequented in the 16th and 17th centuries. It was not until the end of the 18th century that the source and the valley were rediscovered. Let's turn back and cross the tunnel again. For the final leg of our exploration of Fontaine de Vaucluse, we're going to climb up to the castle. To do this, we'll first navigate the village Scalade, starting with the Calade François Petrarch. We enter a very picturesque and lesser known part of the village to tourists.
the Kalad are narrow cobblestone pathways made of large limestone pebbles. We can see the chimney of the old paper mills. It's important to know that the municipality of Fontaine de Vaucluse declines all responsibility for accidents during the climb and visit to the castle. And well, <laughs> I do too. You see, the path is quite rocky and can be very slippery after rain. As this is my first time climbing to the castle, I'm not entirely sure where I'm supposed to go. Sometimes the trail isn't very obvious and you wonder where it leads. I'm going to be quiet now as I climb up to the perched castle and I'll leave you in the company of the chirping birds. Here we are at the entrance to the castle. Before entering the fortress, let's catch our breath and enjoy the beautiful view of the village. The first fortress was built here around 1030, likely at the same time as the village church. A donation did mention it in 1034, but the runes we see today date from the early 12th century.
Let's look at the view from this small opening, which is a gun port. The opening in the curtain wall is not an old entrance, it is actually the result of a collapse. And today, it allows us to contemplate Fontaine de Vaucluse and its valley. In the 14th century, the castle became the summer residence of Philippe de Cabassol, the Bishop of Cavaillon at the time. Petrarch will retire to Fontaine de Vaucluse from 1337 to 1353, became his friend and often visited him. The castle was declared a ruin in the 17th century and today the truncated walls no longer have battlements or machicolations. Since the site is only partially secured, one must be very careful there's always a risk of slipping, falling or getting hit by stone. Here we are at the top of the castle. The castle is perched on the large rocky spur that encircles the source of the Sorg. The plunging view of the village and the valley is absolutely magnificent. We recognize the Chemin de la Sorgue that we followed earlier on our way to the source. And in the distance, we can see the Contadine Plain towards l'île sur la Sorgue. Thank you for watching this video. I truly enjoyed having you join me on my stroll in Fontaine de Vaucluse in Provence. I'll see you soon for other adventures. A bientôt!